Hello everyone and welcome. I am JV from the Cyber and You team. Today we will be covering Just Enough Administration or GIA for short. What is GIA and what is its purpose? Well, GIA is to limit the amount of commandlets or administration privileges an administrator, user, or service account can and should have. An example of this would be, for instance, a DNS, DC, or Exchange Administrator. They don't need every commandlet, they only need certain ones in order to do whatever it is they need to do in order to maintain their portion of the domain and or network. So let's get started by running a get command dot count. So as of right now, I have 2,134 commandlets available to me. I don't need all of those in order to, let's say, just do a DNS clearing of the cache. So we are going to remove many of those commandlets in order to prevent a big attack vector for malicious activity. So let's go ahead and create the PowerShell role capability file. And this file is where we determine what roles and privileges we would like the user administrator or service account to have. So to do that, we'll do a P new PS role capability file, specify the path, we'll do C program files, Windows PowerShell, Windows PowerShell, modules, DC test, role capabilities, DC, and then this is where we specify the name of it itself, DC role dot PSRC. Um, so two of these things I had to create prior to the session, and that is this folder in the modules, and then the role capabilities. This is very important. You at the very least need to create a module, and then within it, you have to specify role capabilities. So now that we created that, let's open up this file. And within this, you can specify the author, description, and many more things. So for today, the only thing we are going to concern ourselves with are two of these things. And that would be the visible commandlets. And as you can see in the little description, it says commandlets to make visible when applied to a session. And that's pretty self-explanatory. The only things I want this person to see and or use I specify right here right now and to do that we just type in visible commandlets space equals space and then we specify what commandlet we would like them to use and for this instance we're just gonna go with restart dash computer and that is the only commandlet they will be able to see and or use as of this very moment and I would like to do one more thing and you will notice why later on and we are going to do that here and that's visible external commands and for this I'm going to specify the who am I command because later on we're gonna show that whenever you enter a PS session that incorporates GIA it uses a virtual account for that session alone. It removes that virtual account as soon as the session is over. This reduces the amount of attack vectors. Your credentials don't actually get saved on the computer that you're entering, and no malicious activity can take place using your account. So let's let's finish this up. So the who am I is under the C Windows System32. Who am I? .exe. So now that we've finished that, there's multiple things you can do with this, but for today, we're only going to be worried about these two things. Um, you can set a bunch of parameters as well. So, for instance, if you want to be able to name something or uh, under a commandlet, you only want them to use a certain amount of things, you can specify all these. But for today, we're just going to keep it simple and keep it to the who am I and the restart computer command. So go ahead and save that. And moving on, what we need to do is create a session configuration file. And this file is how we determine who is allowed to partake in the privileges given out by the 
PowerShell role capability file we created earlier. So to do that, new PS session configuration file path. And in this instance, we're just going to put it on the C drive, DC test, PSSC. And now we created that. So now let's open up and configure that file. And as you can see, pretty much the same things starting out, author being myself, description, pretty typical, session type. So we want to switch this to restricted remote server because if you keep it as default that doesn't really do anything when it comes to the GS session default just means as if you were logging in locally but we want to restrict the way we're logging in so we need to change that session type to restricted remote server the other thing um, and I personally feel like you should always have this is a transcript of anything and everything somebody does while in their GS session. So you can view it later, or uh, I don't really know what you are going to end up doing in your organization, but personally, I feel like you should always have a log of what people end up doing. And then the next thing is going to be run as virtual account. We're going to set that as true. And just like I talked about earlier, this is a virtual account that gets created for your session alone and it has only the command that's available to it that we specified in the role capability file. And as soon as you exit the session, that virtual account gets dismissed as well, and nobody can access it after that point. So we're just reducing the amount of attack vectors by not having your personal credential saved on the remote server where you're entering the session into. So I would always have a run as virtual account true. And then the last thing is going to be the role definitions. This is where we specify the user or group that is going to have this role attached to them. So for this, I'm the only user. So I'm just going to specify myself. Role capability, we're going to name it the same as the role capability file we created earlier, which was DC role. And then we're going to remove the rest of these and make sure that the parentheses are proper. They are. And we will go ahead and save this. So now, if we did everything correctly, this should work and register properly. The final step is to register the PS session configuration file. And we do that by doing register. PS session configuration name we're going to call it DC admin and then the path of the PowerShell configuration file which was C drive DC test PSSC and as you can see in the warning it's going to require us to restart the win remote management service so let's go ahead and do that with a restart service win rm. Now, if we did everything correctly, we can enter this PS session. And we should only see one or two commandlets and have accomplished everything we need to do when it comes to GIA. So let's do an enter PS session. Specify the computer name, which is this DC that I'm currently on configuration name which we specified in the previous step as DC admin so now we're entered in now let's perform a who am I and as you can see I'm not actually actually registered as myself but instead a one-time virtual account was created for this session alone and the moment I exit out of the session that account disappears gets deleted whatever you would like to call it so now let us do a get command. Earlier we had over 2,000, and at this point should only be about 9 to 10. And as you can see, I was correct, and the only commandlet available is the restart computer that we specified earlier. And that is how you end up doing just enough administration. 
there's a lot of extra things you can do within this but for this demonstration we were just going over the basics and there's a lot more to do and configure and we will go over that in future videos with a more advanced take on it. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview and creation of a GIA role and if you would like to see any more of our up and coming videos please subscribe and we can't wait to have you with us again.